Hi, this is H.G. Evans from Sapompa, Oklahoma, pastor of a church here called Faith Tabernacle. And the address is 911 North 10th. Come and be with us when you can. And now we will join the service in progress. Everybody, glad you're here today. Thank you for coming. We're going to sing, Fill My Cup, Lord. Help us sing. Pretend where the cameras aren't here. Let's worship like we normally do. Ignore the cameras. <laughs> This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Oh, feel my cup, Lord. I
know this group of people. That I, normally, I can't even hear myself because y'all are so loud. And now you're acting like there's cameras here. Come on. <laughs> How many has had a blessing already from the Lord this morning? All right.
Have you enjoyed the service so far? Yes. So let's, uh, are y'all ready for another song here? You ready for another one, Janice? We're ready. Okay, kick it off. <laughs> This morning, uh, who's going to teach, Darla? You or Janice? Okay, so we'll turn the service to Darla Copeland. All right, the children can go with Miss Debbie. Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off last week. And I know uh, there's more coming in, so kind of share with them where we're at when they come in. Let's look at Ephesians. We've been talking about covenant with God and how we walk in covenant with God and how we maintain covenant with God. 
don't know about you, but I know throughout my life, the times that I've really made some blunders were times when I was basically walking my own path, trying to figure it out on my own. And I got to the point where I read that the path and the plan that God has for me, he's already laid down. So I decided then, okay, if God has a plan for me and a path for me, that's the path I want to be on. Because he said the path of the righteous never fail. And also the path of the righteous, they don't slip and fall. They don't make mistakes. They don't learn by errors because they're, you know, God has already laid that for me. And it, I found it here in the book of Ephesians talking about the covenant with God. And last week we was talking about how God laid the foundation that you look at with love. All four corners of the earth was laid with the love of God. It was a firm foundation. And then when he spoke and said, let there be, there was. So you and I made in the image of God, we lay that foundation with the fruit of love. And then when we look in the word and we begin to see where God says we can sow seed, we can speak like him, we can call things that are not as though they were. We don't like our situations, we can change our situations. But first and foremost, we have to do it God's way. It is laying the foundation of love, choosing to clothe yourself in love every single day. And that's something that you have to do. That's what Paul said. You have to renew your mind every day to clothe yourself in love. I, you know, you get to the point after you're an adult, you no longer remind yourself to get up and put clothes on. You know not to go out of the house naked. But we have to do the same thing in the spirit realm. You get up every day and you clothe yourself in love. Don't walk out of the door. Don't walk out of the house naked. Spiritually, you know what will happen? Soon as somebody crosses your path you don't like, ooh, anger and rage. Soon as you get on the freeway and somebody cuts you off, you have a tendency to give them a sign language. On and on and on. Why? You haven't clothed yourself in love. You got up, you forgot to put on your armor, you forgot to put on your clothes. And he said, be, in, be an imitator of God. Okay. When we call things that are not as though they were, is that not faith coming out of our mouth? Okay. What energizes and ignites and causes faith to work on your behalf? Love. Love is what energizes and causes faith to bring things to you. We have to get to the point to where we're going to do it God's way or we're going to struggle our whole life. And God is such a gracious God. He gave us free will. He'll still love you. But he will let you struggle all your entire life if you choose to do it your way. Yeah. I've heard people go, well, I'm doing it my way. I think there was a song that said, doing it my way. You can, you can be miserable your whole life. And they can sing that song at your funeral. He did it his way. I don't want to be miserable my whole life doing it my way. I want to be filled with joy doing it God's way. I want to walk in the grace of God with God's joy. I want to walk in the abundance of God with God's abundance. I, the love and joy and peace of God, there's nothing on the face of the earth that can absolutely compare to it. You, you know, we concentrate so much on trying to create and cause things to happen when all we need to do is concentrate on doing what God said in the book of Matthew. Get up first in the morning. Seek his way of doing things. What's God's way of doing things? What's God's way of doing things? Praise and worship. He created us as vessels of mercy. So he said that if you don't praise and worship me, what's going to happen? He'll cause rocks to cry out and praise him. God is a God that requires. I've heard people say, God doesn't need me. Yes, he does. He needs us to praise and worship him. He created us to praise and worship him. That's what we're supposed to do. That's God's way of doing things every single morning. And then before you get your, your piece of paper out and your one through ten, God bless my family, bless my husband, bless my children, bless my job, heal, so, heal my family, heal, on and on and on. It's always about me, 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 I, 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 I. That is not God's way of doing things. No, God's way of doing things is praising and worshiping Him, asking God to have His will and His truth and His justice on earth, asking God to give practical insight and knowledge to our leaders, our teachers, our, 
our pastors, the principals of our churches, that's God's way of doing things. He knows what I have need of, but he needs me to verbalize what, he, what needs to be done here on earth. He said, we are the stewards of this earth. What are we doing on this earth if we're not vocalizing God? Go out, have justice, have truth on this earth. The eyes of understanding in our leaders have their eyes open so they'll know what is the will of God. They'll know what's the right and proper thing for all people. Okay, let's look at Ephesians on that, on that verse right there. That is Ephesians 1 and 17. For I always pray the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant it says you, but put yourself there, personal, would grant me a spirit of wisdom and revelation, which is the insight into the mysteries and the secrets of God and in the deep, intimate knowledge of God. And that having my eyes and my having the eyes of my heart flooded with light, the eyes of my heart flooded with light. What does that mean? It means when I don't know what to do, my mere intellect does not know what to do. God has given us the eyes of understanding that will flood my heart. When my eyes are flooded with light, then guess what? My mind and my will and my emotions are going to line up with God's word. That's what we need to ask God for. When we're praying, the eyes of our understanding, I mean, we get to the point where we've tried to figure out and jam things to do for years. All of us have tried to fix things for years. How's that working for us? It's not. It isn't working. Because why? Our intellect is trying to figure out, well, if they just do what I said, or if they just do it this way, or if they just do it like uh, Daddy has a friend. I mean, we growing up with Sister Hootendiddle. If we would line up like Sister Hootendiddle wants us to line up with. I love this woman. I never met her, but she's been an illustration for <laughs> my entire life. Sister Hootendiddle knows how to sit back in the bench and tell me how to live my life. Now, if I could just line up with that, everything would be good. But you know what? That's not the way God said. God said, first and foremost, you're a spirit. That's right. So, yeah. doesn't that tell me that I need to have the eyes of my understanding flooded with the spirit of God and that in my heart? Secondly, then I am spirit and then soul and then body. See, we have it backwards. We try to get up and line people up. Tell them how their body, their outward man ought to behave. You can't have, you cannot change your outward man if your inward man is still the same. See, if your inward man finds peace and out of his soul, his mind, his will, and his emotion, he speaks peace, guess what will happen? Then the natural man, peace will come out. See, you, just like you've got to do it God's way. Spirit, soul, body. First and foremost, spirit, soul, and body. Train yourself to get up and do it God's way. Praise and worship God until you feel the fruits of the spirit come up on the inside of you right. then your soul is your mind your will and your emotions the peace of god comes out of my mouth god i thank you that you gave me your love i thank you that you gave me your peace i thank you that you put on me all of your joy jesus said in the book of john he emptied himself out right. so that i might be filled with joy Amen. and he said fullness of measure meaning when i'm filled up then that joy spills over onto somebody else people want to be around you when you're filled of joy sister yeah. they don't want to be around you if you're cranky all the time right. judgmental all the time right. always walking around like you lost your best friend all the time <laughs> no come on that's not the image of god I, I mean can you imagine god sitting up there you know poking jesus can you believe what they're doing look at what they're wearing you know <laughs> can you believe they said that no, they don't do that. Why do we do that? I hear people at work all the time just, you know, instead of working, they're sitting there picking at what somebody walked in wearing. It's like, what does it matter? It's not you. You didn't wear it. You didn't buy it. It's not you strutting in with it. Just go to work. Stop worrying about what somebody else is doing. I, you know, it's a full-time job for Darla just to renew her mind on a daily basis and to walk in love and joy and peace. You know, it's not my job to try to tell, call Lisa up and go, well, Lisa, get that grin off your face. Or Lisa, wipe that frown off your face. Or Lisa, you're too happy today. Lisa, you're not happy enough today. <laughs> Come on. That's not my job to do that. No, 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 no. It's my job to walk in the love of God and portray God to such a 
and extent and fullness that somebody else wants what I have. No, nobody wants what I have. It doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It doesn't matter how sober looking my face is. It doesn't matter how long and drawn out my face is. It doesn't matter, look as if I am enduring my life to the bitter end. People don't want that. They do not. I can't imagine Jesus being that way. I know Jesus wasn't that way. People were drawn to him even when he did not open his mouth. Children were drawn to him when he did not open his mouth. I, I heard a little technique, and I might have heard it. I'm not sure where I heard it. I may have heard it from Steve because I think it's a teaching technique. Something that you do, we do need to concentrate on. If you're not saying a word and somebody's looking at you, what are they seeing? <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't say anything, and you and I know who they are. We'll see them walking in Walmart, and we go to the other side of the store because you can go, oh, you can tell by looking at them, they are not in a good mood today. <laughs> and you don't want to hear all of that negativity coming out of their mouth. No, come on. You're witnessing just by, even if you're saying nothing, you are witnessing by the way you are looking, by the way people see you walk in a store, the way they see you walk into your job, the way you see you go places, you're witnessing. It's like, what is your face saying? You know, is it saying I'm filled with joy today? Is it saying I'm filled with the love of God today? Is it saying I'm at total peace with God? Is it saying I'm walking in God's covenant today? I am filled with the glory of God today? What's it saying? She wants me to read Ephesians 2 and 10, so. Is that right, 2 and 10? Mm -hmm. Says, for we are God's own handpicked workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do the good works which God has planned for us beforehand. For us, taking paths which he has already prepared there's our path. And I'm God's, you know, if I'm God's, if I'm really going to get this in my spirit and having my eyes flooded, if I'm God's handiwork, I'm God's workmanship, and we are to be imitators of God, then we should be an imitator of John, not only John 3.16, but John 3.17. That was what, that's what God told us in 3 and 16. Everybody knows that verse, what he did. But they forget to read 17. He also told Jesus this is what he was to do. He sent not me, his son or you, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world, through seeing the way he acted, might want to receive salvation or receive the covenant of God. So Jesus came into the world as a peacemaker. He did. He came into the world and showed the love of God. He showed the peace of God. He showed the joy of God. He showed the faith of God, Amen. the patience of God. He showed the nine fruits of the Spirit. You want to know what God is like? Read about the nine fruits of the Spirit. That's the personality of God. That's God's personality. And that's what Jesus showed. That's what he walked in. You and I, thank God, Sister, we don't live under the Old Testament where we have to follow all the rules and the regulations and have a priest make atonement for us. Jesus lived under all of that and he still walked with joy. We live in a country where we have so much peace. We really have the right and we have the freedom to worship God any way we want to worship God. We don't have anybody of tyranny telling us that we can't worship God a certain way you know or, or have to hide like they do in certain parts of the world that are in communist countries they have to literally hide you know in people's apartments and they change places constantly so they don't get caught because it's a death sentence we have the freedom over in this country to worship God but yet we don't we don't we have we are the most blessed country in the world but we are also the most gripingest complainingest sickest country in the world get the collation here maybe <laughs> Do what? <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> kind of understand where we're at. We also listen. The words out of our mouth. The words out of our mouth. We gripe and we complain. We gripe and complain. What happens? Our body, our physical body will get sick. You know, we get to the point to where we have no joy. We, we're filled with anger. We're filled with rage. We have no peace. We constantly also have the country that has the most relationship failures because there's no peace. We don't walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Out of the mouth, thank you, sister, proceeds what? Life or death. 
Jesus said in his word, I've given you life and death today. Choose life. Stop speaking words of death. Stop speaking words of negativity. Stop speaking all of that junk over your life because whether you realize it or not, you're made in the image of God. And God said, because you're made in my image, as long as the earth remains, there is seed time and harvest. Too many people have spoken the wrong harvest over their families, and that's what the problem is. No, that's, not, no, that's for believers. No, it's not. Just come on, use some, use some logic here. As long as the earth remains. Just think of somebody that plants flowers or plants seeds. They have a right to go out and plant ragweed and crab apples if they want to. But guess what's going to come up? Ragweed and crab apples. See, it doesn't say if you're a believer you have a right to plant seed time and harvest and only good things apply. No, it does not say that. It says you're a free person. God made you free and he made you in his image. But if you plant bad things, bad things come up. Seed time and harvest works on this earth whether you believe it or not. If, and you can look, and I, I realize in the word it's called iniquities, but if you can look throughout families, you and I both know that. I mean, and because it's been spoken over families, thank God for my father. He broke those iniquities off of his family. But because it was spoken over and over and over and over and over throughout generations, they had addictions with alcohol and drugs, alcohol and drugs, one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. Right. What happened? No, it's not a genetic defect. It, the, the genetic defect is the words out of the mouth. Right. It was sown on that family from generation to generation to generation. But Jesus said, you can break that curse. How do you break that curse? You get the word in your heart. You have your eyes flooded with light. And you begin to do what God says. Begin to call your family blessed. Begin to call your family. No longer does my family walk in the iniquities of drug and alcohol. Begin to call your family redeemed. It doesn't matter what they did last night. They're redeemed because you said they're redeemed. I told my son years and years ago, you're not, you don't have to like what I'm praying over you or what I'm saying about you. Sooner or later, you're going to like it. But that's not going to stop me from saying it. It's not going to stop me from praying it. And guess what? If you do it long enough, sister, seed time and harvest works. Speak goodness, Speak your goodness over your children. Yes. Even when my son was acting like a fool, messing up in school, dropping out in school. I told you all last week, Steve was gone. He got a call while I was on vacation. And he got accepted into the history department at OU. Hey, right, Boomer Sooner. <laughs> and this is from years and years and years of calling things that were not as though they were. I, mean, I didn't say, I, know, you know, I knew he was smart, but I also knew that he was just goofing off. He wasn't ready to learn. But you can begin to sow seed of goodness over your family. It doesn't matter. The iniquities that runs in families begin to call those out of your family. Speak the word of God over your family. The word of God is more powerful than any drug that your family's taken. The Word of God is more powerful than any alcohol that your family might be addicted to. The Word of God is more powerful. It's just the reason it doesn't happen is because I knew it wouldn't happen. We pray for him one time, sister, and all of a sudden, well, I knew that wasn't going to happen. Then we get on the telephone. We start telling everybody else in the family, do you know so-and-so? They came in drunk last night. They hung over. What happened? You got on the phone and words out of your mouth sowed the same old rotten seed. And what did it do? It watered the harvest. Yeah, the words out of your mouth water your harvest, good or bad. You have to believe he's a good God. Believe he's a good God. Bless God every time. And I've told that to so often. When we, when years ago, when Dad would go in with us and we'd go into some of the prisons around in Oklahoma, that was one of the first things. I, I don't know how to stop doing this. Well, the first thing you need to do is stop talking about it. Because that's what's happened. They've heard in churches for so long, they have to clean themselves up on the outside. But let me tell you, your outside will not clean up until your inside is working in the will of God's word. The eyes of the understanding, the heart is flooded with light. But the longer the devil can keep you concentrating on the outside and how much you need to fix it, the worse it's going to get. He said in Matthew 6 and 20 something, you can look it up, Matthew 6. It's a perpetual cycle. That means it gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. Stop talking about it. Go to the Word of God. Doesn't matter. Don't get under condemnation. Go to the Word of God and keep saying it. God, whom God has set free, is free. 
Keep saying it until it's gone. Don't worry about it. Let God take care of it. Just concentrate getting in the word, walking in the love of God, walking in the peace of God, walking in the joy of God. And one day you'll wake up and those things that used to bother you will be gone. God has forgiven us. Don't worry about it. Stop worrying about it. Because the longer we pick on ourselves and we pick on each other about habits and things they need to get rid of, the worse it gets. It's a perpetual cycle. Guess what? God's Word worked. It really is a perpetual cycle. It started out small, but I kept talking about it. My family kept talking about it. Now it's just so huge. Sometimes we feel like I've heard people say God himself can't fix that. It's just too big. What happened? That perpetual cycle started out small and it got huge. Now it's bigger than the God on the inside of you. What happened is you stopped concentrating on the, man, the spirit of God that was on the inside of you, trying to fix the man that's on the out that we live in this house, this outward man. And as long as we're trying to do that, we are going to fail. We're going to fail. You can't help but fail because that's not how you were not created first body, then soul, then spirit. But the church has it backwards, and they've had it backwards for a very long time. They've worked on the body at first, and then trying to renew your mind, and then work on the spirit. No. No, 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 no. Work on the spirit. Get up every morning. Seek God's way. Get it in the spirit. Praise and worship God that you've been redeemed. Praise and worship God you got the fruit of patience. Praise and worship God you got self-control no matter what it is you need to get rid of. Praise and worship God you got the peace of God. Sooner or later you will have it. Seed time and harvest works. It works. Look how many negative people are in this world. Tell me it doesn't work. They've sown that seed. They live in a, they live in a harvest of negativity. And it's, every time you see them, it's, it, and it seems like they've gotten worse. I've even heard my husband say, my goodness, they, every time I hear them, it just gets worse. Well, sure it does. It's seed time and harvest. It's perpetual motion. Started out as a little tiny plant. Now it's a full-blown harvest. It's a forest they can't get out of. <laughs> And the more they walk to try to get out of and their mouth is still going, the further the forest gets because seed time and harvest works. Come on, change your way of thinking. Renew your mind. Start getting some peace about you. Start getting some joy about you. I don't, you know, I don't listen to it. Thank God. I, I learned, my dad told me that trick a long time ago. <laughs> I learned in a hurry. They, I don't get an awful lot of calls because they know if they call me, we're having a prayer meeting. <laughs> Nobody wants to pray. They want to gossip. You know, it's like, come on over. Let's pray about this. Oh, well, I, somebody's at the door. Click. You know what? That's the best way to stop that. Just start praying about it. Walk away from it. And a lot of people would do a whole lot better. I hate to say this, but really, if your friends don't want to change when they know that you're trying to do the right thing, maybe it's time to change friends. And you don't have to be rude. Just say, Lord, you know, please get me out of the situation. I don't choose to be around people like this. I choose to be around people filled with faith. I choose to be around people filled with joy. I choose to be around people that's filled with life from God. And they're happy. And they're blessed. I am what God says. Exactly. I am so happy when people in this auditorium get new cars, get new houses. My goodness, I am, I am ecstatic about it. Because you know why? I know they're hearing God's covenant work. So many people, though, that I work with, they're upset about it. Well, I don't know how they got that. <laughs> I know what they got paid, how they get that, you know. How they get promotion over me. They're not happy. They're not happy about it. They're jealous. They're envious. They're filled with strife. <laughs> Maybe we need to get around away from people like that. Get around people that's filled with joy. And they're happy when you prosper. They're happy when you get a new home. I'll be ecstatic when... Joe and Lisa get their brand new home because I know they're going to get one. I want to. Oh, you got it. Woo. Praise the Lord. We've been praying for that for a long time. Good job. I'm just filled with joy. I love it. I love to see the new cars pull up in the car parking lot because I know God's covenant works. I know his word works. We've got to get in our heart. All I have to concentrate on, God, is getting up every day, do what Colossians 3 said, clothe myself in love, be a representation of God. Do people want to be around me because they feel better when they leave, or they know when they get around me they're going to get a word of encouragement? Or do people leave you feeling more down, more depressed, you know, angry and upset because you've been sharing, you know, you're sharing your, what you call the gospel on the phone? <laughs> You're telling everybody in the church what everybody else in the church did. 
Oh my goodness, let's go to Colossians 3. <laughs> Gotta read it. <laughs> we talked about that. Oh, it's like I was doing good until I went there, huh? <laughs> Colossians 3 and 12. <laughs> Clothe yourselves. Well, that tells me then, right there, I don't need to call the pastor and tell him to pray for me. That's right. <laughs> you know, I've said this illustration over and over. I got up and dressed my children when they were tiny children. But there would be an issue if my son at 37 right now called, Mom, can you come and get me dressed? We have Grandpa come over here and pray for me, put my clothes on. <laughs> okay, doesn't that sound silly? But we do that all the time. In the spiritual realm, we call the pastor, we call people. We want them to do what we should be doing ourselves. Yeah. Pastor can't pray joy on me. That's right. Darla gets up and clothes herself and puts joy on herself. I love seeing Jennifer sitting back there because she gets so cracked up. She starts laughing and I can see it all over her face. But it's true. You know it's true. And she knows who I'm talking about. We have family members that, my gosh, Lord every Jesus, day. we pray for them every day. One of these days, they are going to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Clothe yourself as God's own chosen. We're, we're representatives of God. Purified and holy, well beloved by God, by putting on behavior. There it is. There's that soul realm, the mind, the will, and the emotions. Put on good character. I've heard people say before, well, they just don't have. They have got. They don't have character. Yeah, they have character. It's bad character, but they got character. They put on a behavior that they may have had and put it on for years and years and years. And that was another one I liked a whole lot, sister. Well, I can't help myself. Yes, you can. <laughs> Devil made me do it. <laughs> and, and from my own family members in my dad's family, I've heard, well, that's just my Indian ways. I'm going, I never heard Jesus say, well, that's just my Jewish ways. If Jesus didn't say it, I shouldn't be saying it. Come on. That's just my ways. No. It ought to be way, the ways of God. It ought to be God's way. You know, we're representing God. We shouldn't be saying, you know, misbehaving and going, well, I can't help it. That's just my way. No. It is. It is your way. But we need to be changing that to God's way. God's way is filled with love, speaking peace. We should be edifying, lifting each other up. We do it through the spirits praying, and we also do that through the words coming out of our mouth. Lift each other up. It doesn't matter what so and so's been going through. We have to help. We have to help pray for that. But instead of saying, "Well, I'm not. I'm not going to have anything to do with it. I knew what they did last night. So what? That doesn't mean we have a right to go and start criticizing and condemning and judging. That means we clothe ourselves in love, and we go love them and pick them up and say, "It's going to be okay. The grace of God is sufficient. It is. It's." You either believe that or you don't. God's grace is sufficient. Yeah. You pick people up. You love people. You can literally love all of those things that bothers you so bad about your family. You can love that out of them. We've picked on them for years. We've criticized them for years. And how's that working? It isn't. It's gotten worse. <laughs> I know there's family members. You don't want to do that. You just want to grab them by the neck and go. But if you just listen to me. <laughs> our family's a test. I think our family's a test. <laughs> no doubt. Can you imagine the test that Jesus went through, though? <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> Clothing yourself, God's own pick, chosen ones, and then He tells you the behavior. And here it is: behavior marked by or. This is the example of tender-hearted, pity, mercy, kind feeling, a lowly opinion of yourself. Uh-oh. What about me? What about me, Lord? There's that jealousy. They got a new car. What about me? Uh-oh. That one's one we had to deal with a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but Lord, you don't know how long I fasted and prayed. You don't know how long I've been in the way. You don't know how long I've been in church. In the way, in the way is probably right. In the way. 
gentle ways, patience. That's another one. That's a test for the Evans family. Woo! It's a bad one. <laughs> we live in a society that is microwave. I mean, to tell you, we want something and we want it now. Patience, I, you know, that's a tough one for most people. There's not a lot of patience in this world. There really isn't. There's not a lot of patience, and that's the one we got to pray for. And I, my brother always had an example that I loved, and I've never forgotten about seed time and harvest and the lack of patience. Yeah. We want to plant the seed in the ground and see it the next day. Or as his illustration was, plant the acorn seed today and holler timber tomorrow. <laughs> and that doesn't work that way. If it doesn't work in the natural realm, it doesn't work in the supernatural realm. Now, God will expedite things, but you have to get an understanding of seed, time, and harvest. Amen. What do I do during that time? I praise and worship God by watering that seed. Water it with the word. That's how you get the time area in there. Patience. Being gentle and forbearing with one another. As if one has a grievance against another. Pardon each other. Forgive each other. We, we also live in a... A lot of times we've grown up hearing that, well, if you don't believe my way, then... You're wrong. Guess what? God has made everybody different for a reason. We're not clones. No. We read things. That's why we have the whole body of Christ. We can help each other. Whatever I read, I get something different out of it. Whatever Joe reads, he gets something different out of it. And then we should go with this course, one back, back and forth. Well, what did you get out of that? Oh, that's good. This is what I got out of that. Instead of fighting each other going, you're wrong. Well, you're of that, you're of that uh, denomination, and I'm of this denomination, and the two shall never agree on anything. No, come on, that's not right. We are supposed to get along with one another, walking in peace, walking in joy, not arguing with one another. You know, truly, if you're walking in the love of God and you're assured of your covenant with God, it doesn't matter what, some, if, what somebody else says, even if you disagree, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. They're God's children. It's up to God. To, to, if God needs to correct them, He will. It's not up to me to do that. That's what the Word is for. We're supposed to walk in the love of God. And let God do the rest. I mean, it's not my job to correct somebody if I think they're wrong. It's my job to love that person. Walk in love. Walk in forgiveness. Walk in grace. Let my words be grace. That's what the Word says. And, and remember what Isaiah 50 says. We are disciples. We ought to get up every day saying, Lord, I thank you. I have the tongue of a disciple, one who is taught, one who knows how to speak a word in season to those that are weary. And the word is not not supposed to be a word of condemnation. The word is supposed to be a word of kindness, of goodness, filled with the love of God and filled with the grace of God. Thank you for listening, and we'll pick it up next week in Ephesians 2. Amen. Good lesson, Darla talked. First, I want to thank Roger and Charlene Martin for coming from Arizona and filming this service today. He tells me it's going to go all around the world, and uh, that's what we prayed for is to uh, get the message around the world and let everyone know that Jesus loves them and cares for them. And we thank you for coming today and participating in this service. And soon as we can get the children together, together here, we're going to call up uh, Gerald Glass. And then after that, we want Brother Steve to come and do a song. Uh, Brother Gerald is going to come up here pretty soon and he's going to uh, he's going to give you a short testimony sing a couple of songs and we want you to just enjoy the service how many enjoyed the service today really God's here to bless you amen give the Lord a good hand are you already
Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. I'd just like to share with you all what I went through the last six months. Uh, in February, I had a real stomach ache. I thought it was a stomach ache. My wife called the ambulance. They took me to the St. Francis. They run tests for uh, a couple of days, sent me home. Uh, and the next morning, I go back to St. Francis. I was in St. Francis for three weeks. We had the best specialist look at me that, that lives at St. Francis. The best is supposed to be in the world, but after three weeks, they couldn't determine what was the matter with me. So at four o'clock in the morning, when that snow and ice was on the ground, they called Oklahoma City, they got an ambulance, and they took me to Integris, which is a cancer hospital in Oklahoma City. I was there uh, two days, and they determined I had an abscess on my liver. St. Francis thought I had cancer. But after looking at me, and I said, Doc, what are we going to do? We're going to have to open me up? He says, no, we're going to treat you by antibiotics. They put a tube in my stomach so that the uh, pus from the abscess could get out of my body. After two days there, they sent me home. While I was in St. Francis, uh, I went code blue twice. Now, for you, those that don't know code blue, that's when you really die and they bring you back. Doctors told me if you hadn't lived a good life and been athletic all your life, we'd never brought you back that third time. But I know the man upstairs brought me back. I lost 32 pounds while I was in the hospital, but I've gained 28 of that back, and it's due to the Lord healing. me. Let's praise him. I'll fly away. What what chord you do that in? G. G. Yeah. Okay. do so. Let's give the Lord a praise. It's happy to see everybody, good to see everybody happy and praising the Lord. Got good health. Of that 32 pounds that I lost, I got 28 of it back. And thanks Amen. the Lord. <laughs> Sister Charlene, do you want to sing today? Yeah. Come sing. 
I've got one more here. Let her go. Oh, I'm sorry. No problem whatsoever. Charlene, you want to play? Brother Mark, while they're getting ready here, you want to come and receive the tithes and offerings for us? Well, this song is Call on the Name of Jesus. And uh, anyway, I know you'll be blessed by it because, you know, that's what we do. We call on the Lord. We need healing. We need salvation. We just call on Jesus, and he's always there for us. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of the Lord. He really loves you. He really loves you. He cares. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name. Of the Lord, He really loves you. He really loves you. Oh, He cares. Oh, you'll be healed when you call on His name. You'll be healed when you call on His name. He really loves you. really loves you. Uh, 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 Gerald, you have one more song you want to do before we call Brother Steve up here? Okay. What do you want to do? I have? Someone to care now. When the world seems cold and your friend seem few there is someone who cares for you 
When you need a friend, someone to the end, there is someone who cares for you. Someone to care, someone to share all your troubles. No other can do He'll come down from the skies Brush those tears from your eyes There is someone who cares for you There's someone to care, someone to share all my troubles like no other can do. He'll come down from the skies, brush the tears from your eyes. I want to uh, introduce you uh, to Sister Trilla. Will you stand up this morning? And Roger, can you get a shot of Sister Trilla here? She's been coming to church here for since about eighty six, nineteen eighty six. Been coming here twenty three years. Twenty three years. <laughs> and she's ninety one years old. Okay. Isn't that the Lord had. Give me strength and health yeah. all of these years. I don't take any kind of medicine but high blood pressure medicine. Yes. And, yes. and I just thank the Lord for it. Yeah. And I love this church. You know, uh, while Darla was teaching up here, uh, it came to me that. You know, we expect when we profess our faith in Jesus that just everything's going to be smooth. But, you know, it tells us to renew our mind. And like she says, what comes out of our mouth is going to determine the way we feel and what happens. And it made me think of Philippians 4 and 8 where Paul says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, yeah. whatever things are of a good report, if there's anything of virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Amen. And that will sure change what comes out of your mouth and the way you feel because Amen. I was walking this morning before church and I was getting tired of the heat and the sun. <laughs> Man, it's hot. It's killing my tomatoes and it's frying my flowers. And then I thought, you know, thank God for the sun. You know, right. thank God for the light. Thank God for the heat. It's not 35 below zero like it was six months ago. You know, it'll change. Amen. Things change, but you've got to make them. You've got to do something. You've got to get up just like Peter had to get up when he got the shackles off and the bars open. Yeah. Put on your shoes and walk, brother. Right. So anyway, do something. Life is like a mountain railway With an engineer that's brave We must make the run successful From the cradle to the 
gray Watch the curves, the hills, the tunnel Never falter, never quail Just keep your hand up on the throttle And your eye up on the rail And blessed say Thou wilt guide us Till we reach that blissful shore Where the angels wait to join us And I pray forevermore You will roll up grains of trial See that Christ is your conductor on this lightning train of life and always mindful of obstruction. Do your duty never fail. Just keep your hand up on the throttle and your eye up on the rail and blessed Savior thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us and I praise forevermore. Brother Jay! Watch for storms of wind and rain On a hill or curve or trestle They will almost ditch your train But put your trust alone in Jesus Do your duty never fail just keep your hand up on the throttle and your eye up on the rail and blessed Savior thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to Spanning Jordan, swelling time You behold the Union Depot Into which your train will glide And there you'll meet the superintendent It's God the Father God the Son With a heart In joy is plotted Weary people Welcome home And bless
blessed Savior, Thou wilt guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in Thy praise forevermore. And blessed Savior, Thou wilt guide us So we want to do a little song here, I uh, Can't Walk Without You Holding My Hand. And I, I learned this, I heard this down in Just Done in 1990. And uh, the song just stuck with me and I fell in love with it. So I'd like for me and Darla to do this number today. Can't Walk Without You Holding My Hand. But did you enjoy the song service so far? Give the Lord a good hand. You ready, Darla? Grant, you kick it off in D chord. Jesus here today. Can't you just sense his presence? mother who wrote this song and she's doing exactly what she wrote about 
right now going to walk this road to glory. I'm going to do this in honor of my mom. You ready, brother? Everybody knows this, so you might as well stand and clap your hands. I'm moving over, Roger. Well, I've had many pitfalls since I've been on this road. My back has been so late that I fail to need the load. I make myself coming out this long and winding trail. But I'm stepping in the footsteps of the one who never fails. Gonna well, walk this road to glory, children. My Lord and I gonna shout and tell a story with every stride. The rain shining, snow and sleep. No, the Lord going down my feet. Gonna walk this road to glory, children. You, my Lord and I. Thank you, bless you all along the journey. Signs of souls that have slipped. And those who started out to win no longer make the trip. But we must keep on going. Reach it down and lift them high. Walk this road to glory, children. You, my Lord, and I. Walk oh, this road to glory, My Lord, and I. Shout and tell a story with every free stride. The rain shines, snow and sleep. I know the Lord, the Lord, and I. Walk this road to glory, children. You, my Lord, and I. Love never fails because it ties right into our service and with what Brother Steve said. Just think on good things. There's so many things throughout the day to get you annoyed, but think on good things. Oh, that's right. I, I had moved it because he wanted it moved. Did you put it back? I've got it. Okay. Our little ones put. They look forward to putting the change in our little church that's what we send flowers to those that are sick and cards and they it's that's their job they do an important job and it's amazing every year how much money they put in that little church i'd like to say a little bit about this song for brother gets cues it up uh, love never fails my sister wrote this song right after what happened in oklahoma city bombing and uh, this was a uh, kind of like a dream that came to her. So she started, you know, seeing all the hurt and devastated people from the bombing that had happened in Oklahoma City. And uh, she wrote this song about that. And that's what this song's about. Love never fails. your world I see shattered loves and broken dreams I see children killing children families torn apart at the seams there are young mothers crying cause they have little mouths to feed up 
my brother. We can stop all the hurting together. There's nothing we can't do. Amen. We must dare to love our brothers. You love me like he loves you. for the offering and the service. And the Lord has uh, prompted me to talk a little bit about faith today. So as I, I'm getting my Bible right here. So I want to read in the book of Romans, if you have your Bible, Romans 4, 5, 12th chapter, reading about the third verse but we'll, but we'll start in the first verse and I've been studying uh, about faith all week and seem like it, it, it just comes back to me the same thing over and over again Romans 12th chapter starting in the first verse how many is there got, got the scriptures Say, I got it. I, got it. <laughs> I beseech you, therefore, brethren, or beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Here's what, here's what I want you to catch this third verse. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Or you, you could say a measure of faith, but the writer put the measure of faith. And you must remember, whenever we were all born again, came to the Lord, gave a heart and life to Jesus, we, that faith came into our heart and came into our spirit. So this is why Paul, God has dealt the man the measure of faith. We all have this measure of faith. Some seem like they measure faith more than others. Really, uh, it's not that way. It, it just seems like uh, other people may have more faith than we have. But it's not that way. God gave everybody the measure of faith. I've said this before. Does this just seem like all oh, Roberts may have had more faith than you had? No, he, he just exercised it. He just used the faith that he that God gave him. And, and 
So, and other, other men, of, men and women of God seem like they may have more faith than you and I have, but it's not so. God has dealt everybody the measure of faith. Whether I use it or not is up to me. And, and the way to get that faith stirred is to uh, hear the word taught and preached. Over in Romans 10, turn back a page, Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hearing faith, hearing God's word builds your faith. Not, not that you need any more faith. You have all the faith you could ever have because you received it when you were born again. But sometimes hearing the word causes that faith to rise up within you and you can just begin to believe God for anything. And so, do you ever stop and think about this, that uh, hearing yourself speak, hearing yourself pray, this is why Brother Jude said, pray in the Spirit, building up your most holy faith. You have to hear yourself praying a lot of times. And when you hear yourself praying, you're hearing, your, you're hearing words come out of you, and that causes you to uh, uh, release your faith unto God. You, you remember the great message that Paul was teaching and preaching to the people in his time? He looked around and he perceived a man was uh, ready to, to receive his healing. And so if Apostle Paul looked around and perceived the man was need his healing, why wasn't he healed? He needed somebody to agree with him. He needed to hear the Word of God. And a lot of times when we come to the house of God, we need to hear the Word of God spoken. And not, not only that, you need to hear the Word of God. And, and so, and this, this is what causes faith to be built so that you can believe God for anything. You, you must remember whenever Jesus healed people in His time, He always said, Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you well. Uh, Jesus just agreed with them. You remember the story about the little widow woman had an issue of blood for 40, well, for so many years. How many years was that? Someone tell me. 12 years? 12 years? And she said, if I can just be in that service where my Lord and Savior is, I know if I can just come and touch the hem of His garment, I can be made well. I can be healed of my infirmities. Well, you know the story. In that day, hour, and time, the, the apostles didn't know beans about the anointing, didn't know beans about the, the anointing going out of people or the energy or the power going out of people. So whenever the little woman came and touched the hem of Jesus' garment, she was made whole. But what did she, how did she uh, come to do this? She heard she heard about Jesus. You have to hear God's word. You have to hear yourself speak. You have to hear yourself praying. And that's why Jude said pray in the spirit building up your faith. Not that you need any more faith. You need to build up and the faith you have so that you can believe God for anything. Yes. Do you remember the story Paul spoke of in Hebrews 11 and 2, I believe it is, by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Why, they, they went through the den of lions. They went through the fire. The, the, the fire didn't burn the three Hebrew children. There wasn't a bit of smoke on their clothes. And made that old king scratch his head and think. And when he looked in the fiery furnace, he said, I see the fourth one walking in there liking unto the Son of God. They did that by faith. They had faith in their Maker. They had faith in Jehovah God Almighty. They had faith that wh whatever they could release their faith to God, it would go. It would happen. It would happen. So America and a lot of church world has got away from 
faith, believe in God for anything. And so, if you pray for anything, you're praying the wrong prayer. If you're praying for the anointing, you're praying for the wrong thing. Because God said, seek me. Seek the kingdom of God. Right? Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness in all of these things will be added unto you. The world and the Gentile nations has gone off after riches, wealth, and things like that. And I think that's the reason why the United States may go down if they don't turn back to God because they went off after riches and wealth and forgot about God. But enough, enough of that. The point I'm getting at is the church needs to begin to believe God for things. But the only way you can believe God for things is seek Him first. Seek the kingdom of God first. So let's read this scripture again. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so whenever I begin to hear God's word taught and preached, it just begins to build my faith. Then I can uh, rise up in, in the name of Jesus and, and begin to speak my health. Speak my blessing. Speak my prosperity in us. So, but we must remember this. We, we must give God all the glory, honor, and praise because back in the Old Testament, the Bible said it's God that gives you power to get wealth. And a lot of preachers and churches have gone off and forgot about God. You must remember whenever Jesus was here, he said, I can't do anything without my Father. I don't do anything without my Father. The words I speak, they're, they're words direct from my Father. The words and what I hear, I hear what my Father tells me. And he went on, went on to say and said, I and my Father are one. You know the story how the Jews begin to get mad and perturbed, you know, begin to cast stones at him. And he said, I've done a many wonderful work for you. For which of those stones do you stone me? They said, we don't stone you for good work because you being man make yourself God because you said you're the Son of God. Am I sinning if I say I'm the Son of God today? No. Are you sinning if you say you're the Son of God today? No. You're righteous. You're holy. You've been born again. So, uh, God has washed us through His Son Jesus in His precious blood and made you and I kings and priests. So quit your bawling, quit your squalling, and rise up victorious and grab a hold, get a hold of this faith which you already have and begin to speak the word. <laughs> Amen. Begin to speak the word. Don't go on, on little pity parties. Don't begin to feel sorry for yourself. Like Elijah said, Lord, I'm the only one. They're come to stone me and kill me, and I'm the only one left. What did God tell Elijah? I have 7,000 more that hadn't bowed the knee to Baal yet. <laughs> Amen. So God has many people worship and serving Him. But in the faith we have, we need to use it. Go to Galatians, second chapter of Galatians with me. Galatians 2, 20. Paul spoke the same thing. I just got through reading in Romans 1 and 2. Present your body a living sacrifice. So this is what he's telling you now here. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Can you and I say Christ lives in us? Can we say Christ lives in us? And the life which I now live in the flesh, the life we are living in the flesh, he said, I live by the faith. What? Of the Son of God. Paul said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And so, 
I can't heal a fly. I can't do anything. It's all points back to Jesus. It all points back to the Lord. He gets all the glory. He gets all the honor. He gets all the praise. Whatever, you know, he said in one place, when you've done all you know to do, you're just an unprofitable servant, right? Whenever I have done all I know to do, I am just an unprofitable servant. I am a pastor. I am a teacher. I am an evangelist. I am an a prophet. If I'm not an apostle, I want to be one day. But all this, Jesus gets all the glory, honor, and praise. I myself can't heal a fly, but I have somebody on the inside of me can do it all. Amen. I have somebody on the inside of me can do it all. This is what Paul means here. I live by the faith. How many of us living by the faith? How many of us walking by the faith? What are we to complain about? Some of us are like those Jews that were led in captivity. Moses told them that when you're in captivity, any place you go is not going to please you. When night comes, you're going to say, I wish it was morning. When morning comes, you're going to say, I wish it was dark. When dark comes, you're going to wish it was daylight. Never, ever satisfied. Jesus said, Ooh, if you come and drink the water I give you, you will never thirst. Out of your most inner beach shall flow rivers of living water. What has kept that river up in you? Has some enemy or some spirit has came along and tried to cap that river up for you and put a dam there and caused the river to quit flowing? Only you and you alone can let the enemy do that. Right? Because we have that anointing on the inside of us. This is what the Bible says. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And I want to speak to the world today. People are crying to hear the word of God. They're crying to know about the word of God. They're bound, sick, and in prison, spiritually speaking. And they're, they're praying and they're looking for someone to come their way to loose them, liberate them, and set them free by the power of the living God. Ooh, hallelujah. Isn't God good to us? Isn't God good to us? This is what the Bible, Paul said, the whole creation groaning and crying, waiting for the sons of God to rise up and victorious. So, so anyhow, the world is in travail. They're waiting and they're crying for someone like you and I to go and release your faith unto them and say, Come on, brothers and sisters. Come on, brothers. Come on, sisters. Come on. We love you. We care for you. We, we want you to come up higher and higher in the Lord. We want you to press more and more for the higher calling who in God Almighty. Press higher and higher for the high calling in God Almighty. And, put your, and don't put your hand to the plow and look back. But come on, brothers and sisters, we're in this race. Let's run this race. Let's don't stop halfway. Let's run this race until God is through with us. Know that God is alive. Ooh, how many believe God is alive forevermore? And the only way the world is going to know that God is alive is for you and I to show our character of God to them. Right? Show our character to God to them. Let you and I be the replica of Jesus. How many know you and I should be the replica of Jesus? We should be letting our light shine everywhere we go. In the stores, in Walmart, everywhere I go in Walmart, they say, How are you doing? I said, I'm blessed. I'm fine. Do you know Jesus? <laughs> Do you know Jesus? 
How many of you are letting your light shine? Or had you put it under a bushel? No, no, no. Don't put it under a bushel. Let your light shine. Say, come on, brothers and sisters. This is, this is a time to rise up victorious in the Lord. Be leaders. Be leaders. Don't be a spectator, but be a participator. <laughs> Amen. How many know that God is real? And so we bring this message to a close today. I know this is a little slogan I've heard a long time. There goes a caboose and this is the end. God bless you. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a good hand.